portrait from a six inch by nine inch photocopy and grading it up and painting it with acrylic to make it look like one of Andy Warhol's famous portraits. Today I'll be showing you how to grid your pop art portraits to do an enlarged drawing. Your paper is six inches by nine inches, so you need to take a ruler and mark off each inch. Horizontally and vertically. And you'll need to do it on not only the top, but the bottom and both sides because you're going to be connecting those lines. Once you have all of your marks drawn, your marks across the top, bottom, and both sides, then you can start connecting the the lines. Now your photograph is, is gridded. Now we also have to grid your paper. You've got a 12 by 18 sheet of paper, and this is exactly twice the size of this. So what we'll do on this one, instead of doing one inch squares, we're gonna mark every two inches. So this paper is 12 inches. So I'll mark at two, four, six, eight, and 10 at the top and also at the bottom. And then along the side is 18 inches. We'll still go by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16 and the same thing on the other side. And just like on your photograph, we're going to connect all of these lines. With these lines, you want to draw them just a little bit lighter because we will be erasing these. So don't push your pencil down on the paper, just drag it across. For this side, we may have to use yardsticks if your ruler isn't long enough. Or if your ruler isn't long enough, then um, you can also measure the tick marks across the middle. So I would do two, four, six, eight, and 10. And then I have something to connect it to if my ruler doesn't stretch all the way. So that would look like this. Draw a line to the middle mark and scoot my ruler over and draw a line from the middle mark to the edge and then I have my straight line going all the way across.
Now that I have my big grid drawn, I'm ready to start copying from my small picture to enlarge it. What I have to make sure that I do on my small picture and on my big picture is label each of the boxes um, across the top with letters and down the side with numbers and the same thing on this one so that I don't mix up my boxes and draw the wrong thing. Now that my boxes are numbered, both grids are drawn, I can start drawing what is in each square. So I know that in A1, I don't have anything. I can check that one off. There's nothing in B1, so I can check that one off. When I get to C, there's something to draw. So I'm just focusing on that square. If it helps, you can even cover it up and just look at what you see there. And then if you see, you see that the line of his head starts here. So I'm going to start that about right there. And then that line goes all the way up to about the middle of C1, about right there. So I need to draw a curved line up to here. What I'm going to focus on is drawing the outline of what I see and not coloring in the shapes. We're going to do that later with paint. And if it's not exactly the same, it is okay. It's going, we're working box by box. It'll all start to come together. So now what I see in C1 is now transferred to C1 on my big paper. I can check that one off. Then I move to the next one. It's a little mark here. Draw that over to D1. And then not quite a little bit higher than halfway up, but not quite halfway over, starts that part of his hair. And then it goes a little downward there. And then about right here is where that mark goes in and then comes out to about right there. So it's almost just like I'm creating my own connect the dot, figuring out where the points are in this square and then finding them here and attaching them so that they can make the shape that I'm creating. So now D1 is checked off, I can check it off and move on to E1. I keep going until I've got everything checked off. Working square by square, not worrying about what it's all looking like. Just doing one square at a time. One square at a time is not that difficult if you just focus on it and don't look at the whole picture while you're working. One square at a time. A square like this that has a lot of lines it is just his hair. So if I don't get it exactly right, it's still going to look like his hair. It's not going to really change much just because I don't get this exactly right. Um, it matters more in here in the face, the, the areas that um, you want to try to copy exactly, but um, for his hair, it's just a lot of light and dark spots, and as long as I get them close to where they're supposed to be, it's still going to look like his hair. I have everything drawn. I can go ahead and erase all of the grid lines. Then I'm done erasing. I'll make sure that I haven't erased any important parts um, of my drawing when, when I was erasing my grid. And then you are going to start with the lightest color. 
that you're going to pick three colors, um, a light, a medium, and a dark. And I've picked um, yellow as my light, green as my medium, and blue as my dark. So we're looking at the value of color. So yellow is definitely one of the lightest colors. Blue is a darker one, purple, red, those are darker colors. Um, so pick what colors you want to use. And then you'll start with your lightest color because it's the easiest to cover up if you mess up. So I actually have yellow and I've mixed a little white in it to make it even lighter. Feel free to mix what, mix colors together and make your own colors as well. Um, just be sure that you mix enough of that color, especially if you've got a large area to cover. I'm gonna do um, all the white areas of my portrait in yellow. So these white areas, the white areas of the plate and the tablecloth. And then my mid-tone, my green, is gonna go on the background. And that saves my darkest color for my black of my portrait. So we'll have three colors, um, the background being a different color than the entire portrait. So here we go. So when I paint close to his face, I have to remember that this part is the background. Even though there's not a line drawn here, I have an imaginary line or implied line from the shapes that I drew. And if you go over the line a little bit um, here, where it's supposed to be dark, it's okay because you can easily cover that up with your dark color. Make sure you're not leaving any globs of paint and you're smoothing that out. And you can see how I use my brush, the edge of my brush to get those edges and just kind of make a smooth stroke and then fill in the bigger areas. I have a variety of sizes of brushes. I'm starting with my big brush first and then I'll go in and get to those kind of smaller details that are hard to get with this brush like in, in this area, in his teeth. That's gonna be kind of hard for me to get with this big brush. Next, you'll do your mid-range value, and that will be for the background portion of your portrait. And you can be a little bit more playful with this background portion. If you want to add um, other colors in there and mix it in, I just added some, some yellow. You can go back in after it's dry and add a pattern to the background or design. And that can add a lot to your portrait. Make it more interesting. Since these are all solid colors, it just adds a little bit of visual interest to the background. And then finally, the last part is to add your darkest value. So again, blue is my darkest value. Start with your large areas first, moving on to the details. <laughs> 